Ms. Johnson, and we're kindergarten teachers at Aranma Elementary School. Today, we're going to be talking to you about the importance of number sense. We'll also show you a few activities that you can do with your child at home. The standard we're going to be talking about is counting and cardinality. There are three components to it. One, know number names and the count sequence. Two, count to tell the number of objects, and three, compare numbers. Now there's a lot more depth to this. This is just kind of the, the general framework of this standard, and some of the activities we're going to show you will address these standards. Okay, so first of all, what exactly is number sense? In order to meet the Common Core standards, students need good number sense. Uh, understanding that three means a collection of three. So if you have three fingers, and that goes with number three. Um, also, that would be sense of number. Um, being able to recognize qualities of objects without counting, which is called subitizing. So if I stick up this, they'll know that this is three. There's some really counting. great videos on YouTube that you can look up for your child to watch. And they're a lot of fun. And just look up Subitize, S-U-B-I-T-I-Z-E. You'll find a, a lot of um, activities for them to watch and do. Yes, and we practice these all the time in mm -hmm. kindergarten class. Um, also, one-to-one -one correspondence. And all that means is the last number, or the last word in the counting sequence names the quantity for that set. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I know that I have seven, that I have counted to seven. Because sometimes students um, or children, they skip. So they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they, they won't have that one-to-one -one correspondence knowing that this is one, two, three, four, five, and then sometimes they grab two objects. So that's very common for kindergarten. And also, matching words and numerals to a collection. So, there's the word, and there's the number, and then also knowing, like, if you had one finger would go with that, mm -hmm. so it means one. And um, now, Yvonne, or Mrs. Johnson, is going to be talking okay. to you. Well, well, why is number <laughs> sense so important? It's actually um, probably the most important part of early childhood mathematics. Um, even, uh, but it's really important because just because your child knows how to count out loud doesn't mean they have number sense. And it's so important that they get this. This is the foundation that um, they're going to need in order to be successful in future math courses. Um, now, students who don't have a good sense of number sense are going to have a lot of difficulty with some of the higher concepts. For example, with addition, if I said 3 plus 5, and they have no idea what the quantity of three is or of five, they're not going to be able to do that addition problem. Um, and at some point, it'll be automatic where they'll be able to do the mental math in their head. Now, I have a student here who, in this picture, is very confused. He has no number sense. He hasn't done some of these activities we're going to share with you today. So hopefully we can clear things up with our student here, and he'll be on his way to having great number sense by the end of the day. Yes, yeah. so all of these activities that we do help build number sense. So I'm going to show you two activities, and then these activities um, Mrs. Johnson does in her class, and she has made all of these beautiful visuals for us. Simple, something really simple and easy, things you can do at home. Yes. So, this game we're calling the popsicle stick game. And what you do is you um, basically, you put the numbers, we put them in, in quantities of six. And um, there's missing numbers, if you notice, here. And so then what you do is you, once you prepare that game for your child. Mix up the popsicle sticks. Yeah, mix too. them up. Pretend like they're all mixed up, okay? And then your child has to put the popsicle sticks in order. Okay, so there's one through six and seven and then 12, 13, 14. Then once they do that, and they're in order, their job is to find um, the missing number. So, let's see, three goes here, okay. Oh, and Mrs. Johnson put the number on both sides. 
I have red marker all over my fingers. Okay, so H after eight is nine. And these are all things you can easily find in the Dollar Tree or the yes. 99 cent store, or things that you might just have around at home. So yeah, and pretty soon your easy. students or your children might even want to do it on their own. I know it's a lot of It's also good students. fine motor skills to work yes, with. Yes, exactly. And doing pens. this, this creates good fine motor skills, which mm -hmm. helps you with your writing. And okay, so then 13, 14, then 15, and then we go on to 17, 18, 19. Then when they're done ordering or putting all of the missing numbers in, then they can go back and count. And they're touching as they count. One, two, three, they can count to you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Okay, so that is the popsicle stick. You game. can actually make the numbers higher, you although can. you mm -hmm. you should know in kindergarten the standard is counting to twenty. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the the depth of it. Here it kindergarten is. goes really really deep into numbers up to mm -hmm. twenty. Yes. But of course, if your child can go higher, definitely, definitely go higher. Yes. Yeah, because after a while, they'll know this so yeah. easily. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why and not give them the challenge? Yeah, and you can also, you know, maybe turn the stick, the, this around and then make other um, missing numbers. Mm -hmm. So then, oh, great especially, uh, like, some of the, the 15 is always really hard for them, and the 13 in kindergarten, they get stuck on those two numbers. So that would be really good. To 12 and 21, too. 12, always yeah. Get yeah, and even numbers. 20. A lot of times they say... For, no, a lot of times for 12, they say 20. Mm -hmm. So just some yeah. weird things that we notice because we're kindergarten teachers. Um, okay, so this one is called Find the Picture or Find the Sticker Today. Um, Mrs. Uh, Johnson had a really good idea. She gets um, old pictures that you get. You know how you always take uh, school pictures and you always have like a million pictures left over and you don't know what to do Who with doesn't? them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have all my kids' pictures. <laughs> I know, me too. I know that I haven't gotten out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what you do, okay, let's see. So you're going to lay out. And let's, I'm just going to do three of them, okay? Three. Then it's kind of, you're going to lay out these numbers, okay? But don't do this in front of your child because mixed up order, all no, random. We don't want to do that. Yeah, these have to be random. They can't be in any kind of order. Oh, and she put a line under each number so that um, you'll your child knows that this is the bottom of the number, especially so, with six and nine. Six they always and get nine, mixed up they with do. those. Okay, so then we're going to do this. We're going to lay them all out. Okay, pretend like I'm really fast which I'm not, I'm really slow at everything. Okay, so there's that. All right, then it's your child's, we're gonna hide these two. Um, what your child's gonna do is they have to come over and they have to pick a number, okay? And let's say they say six. So if they said six, they get to, if it's correct, you let them pick it up. No, I'm so sorry, that's. You can flip it over right now. And then what that. you do is you flip it over. Okay, that one's done. So they knew that one. Then let's say they said, okay, that's um, four. No, I'm sorry, you can't You can't flip it over. That's, that's not five. five. That's Correct five. them with the number. Yeah. Yes. Make sure they hear the okay. number. Okay, so then let's say they picked this one. Okay, what number is this? Two. Okay, oh, it's not under there. Okay, flip it over. They knew that one. Okay, I'm trying to think. I can't see, I can't even remember which one I'm putting <laughs> under. Here, <laughs> that's four. Okay. Oh, yay! They get, okay, and they get uh, one through ten just for demonstration purposes, but you can go higher. So here are the numbers. You can go 20 to 30 or as high as your child knows. Um, but Challenge we just, them. Give them big numbers. Yes. Yeah, if they know one to ten, then for sure go on. So... Um, anyways, that is the end of this game, and Yvonne has some, okay. or Mrs. Johnson has some other games. All right, well, the first game I have is called Zap, and the kids really enjoy this game. You don't need anything fancy, just some flashcards, a bag, or a container of some sort. And on the bag, make sure you write Zap. Get a couple of flashcards and write the word Zap. Now, most kids, when you think Zap, you get zapped. What do you do, Mrs. Laureato? <laughs> so that's why this game is so popular in the class, because anytime you pick the card zap, you have to go <laughs> All right, so there's different ways to play. One of the easiest ways to play when your child is just learning uh, recognizing numbers is you're going to put, uh, I made some flashcards with some numbers, and like the last game, make sure you put a line on the bottom so the student knows which is the top and the bottom. Put the cards inside your bag along with your zap cards. Mix them up really good and have the child, they can play in a pair or by themselves. Have them pick out the number 
if they can say the number correctly, oh, 20, they get to keep the card in their pile. Now, should they, I'm just going to look real quick because I want to I cheat for a sec. I'm going to pretend I pulled out a zap card. And if I pull out the zap card, I was like, oh, no, I have to go zzz. And then any and all cards that I have collected throughout the game go back into the bag and I have to start over. So this game could go on and on. You can also use number words or 10 frames. You can make little 10 frames with different uh, amounts and even the students can recognize, um, goodness, I just forgot this word. Tally marks. Tally marks as well. You can mix them up or put them, uh, different ones inside the zap bag. Now another thing you can do with the zap, with the same cards is you could supertize them, mix them all up and quickly do like a flashcard type activity where the student can quickly recognize them. Of course, they'd be all mixed up and as quick as they can be able to tell you the, the number that it is. So uh, I, one last thing you can do with the exact same cards is play a game of memory, put them all down, face down, and have the students match them up or face up if that's where they're at. So we hope you've enjoyed some of our games and uh, have fun. Oh, don't forget to show our picture of our student who has played all their games and has learned. <laughs> Here is a picture of our student who learned and practiced a lot of their games and is now very, very clear and understands. Oh, oh there he is. Here he is in color. <laughs> so, so he, he has the aha moments. Yes, he is very good at